Chapter 17 is a continuation of our theme of aromatic compounds. In this chapter, however, we're going to look specifically at some of the interesting reactions that involve these aromatic compounds. We'll start off by looking at a reaction known as electrophilic aromatic substitution. So this reaction is pretty interesting and the neat thing about it is that we see this general mechanism occurring over and over as we go through out our first part of this lecture. So there's a couple steps to it. So here's our step number one. Step number one is going to have benzene. So we're going to see an aromatic compound here. Now benzene is your nucleophile. It'll grab a hold of some electrophile and the only thing that's going to differ on these mechanisms is what this electrophile is. And when it does that, we'll lose a double bond temporarily. And so the electrophile has been added here. That leaves a plus charge at the bottom of carbon. And then we see one, two, in this case, three resonance structures. And this complex down here below is known as the sigma complex. Right, so a sigma because a new sigma bond has been formed. Our second step of this reaction is the reformation of our double bond to restore aromaticity. So we'll have some type of base, probably like a B minus or something along those lines coming over, grabbing a hold of H atom where the electrophile was added and reforming the double bond. So electrophilic because you got an electrophile here, aromatic because of the benzene ring, and substitution because this H has been substituted with an electrophile. Right? And then the inorganic product HB down here below. Right? So let's take a look at some of the reactions. And the first one we're going to look at is called halogenation. So halogenation, um, the observed reaction for this, you need to make sure that you're familiar with this, but the observed reaction of this has benzene as our nucleophile, and then some type of halogen, usually bromine or chlorine. And to this, we have to have a catalyst. So we have to sprinkle in a little bit of a catalyst. And we'll see how that catalyst um, helps facilitate this reaction as we go through the mechanism here on the next page. And in the end, again, what happens is an H atom substituted with an X. So um, before we get into this, I want to talk about how that Lewis acid um, is useful in these reactions. So if you remember from first semester, um, this reaction down here below, you have a normal alkene, and to that you add bromine. If you recall what forms here, is that we get an anti-arrangement of those bromo groups with each other. So we, in this case, we form a mixture of enantiomers. Now when you go through and you calculate this delta H here, right, this is delta H, what we find experimentally, it is equal to negative 29 kcals per mole. That means that it's an exothermic reaction, right? So let's we'll write down here, exo. Now let's compare that to benzene. Let's come down here and let's look at benzene. So here's benzene uh, in the presence of bromine, right? And, and then let's put in here one EQ. It means you have one equivalent of it. Um, and when we add this, if we if it were to react, what we would find out here is that we get this anti-arrangement again, right, if we did an addition reaction. Um, here, plus the enantiomer, so the same general uh, product here, except our wedges and dashes would be switched. And then the delta H for this, though, is actually going to be endo. Now, it's endothermic because we have a loss of aromaticity loss of aromaticity so this is not an observed reaction so just big box around this 
This is just a theoretical thing, not a readily observed. So the problem with itself is that bromine is not electrophilic enough to react with benzene. So if you remember before in that general reaction, we needed to have like an E plus essentially there. Okay, so bromine by itself is, is not electrophilic enough. Now the solution to this problem is to add a Lewis acid, an electron pair acceptor. We could use FeBr3, it's kind of the most common one that we use with bromination to catalyze the reaction. And this leads, by the way, to the substitution product. Well, let's take a look down below here at the preliminary step of this thing. So what happens here is that we have bromine, and bromine's Br2. Let's put in our lone pairs here. And this is a Lewis base. And that's going to react with FeBr3. And that, again, we pointed it out up above, that is your Lewis acid. So what happens is that the electrons from one of the ends of our bromine are going to come over and grab a hold of iron. So in our preliminary step, we're going to form this intermediate kind of charged complex. So that's going to be a bromine connected to the bromine. And then this is going to be connected to iron tribromide, FeBr3. So the bromine here in the middle is going to have a positive charge and iron will have a negative charge. So because of that positive charge on bromine, which is electronegative, we're going to see a big dipole getting pushed down that direction. And what that's going to do is down here on this end, that's going to make this end our electrophile. So just make a note here. So this is our electrophile. All right. It's our electrophile really end. So it's our E. All right. So then reaction wise, if we if we look down here below, here's what's gonna happen. Here's your here's your benzene ring. Right now, what's going to happen is we're going to have here our bromine, bromine, FeBr3, just like so. And then a set of these electrons are going to come around and grab this. So remember that the double bond here is our nucleophile. And then we're going to come over and we're going to give the bromine with the plus charge on here a set of electrons so that it becomes neutral. So um, what we're going to get, let's put in the rest of the bonds here. So those double bonds are not going to move in this case. And then let's put um, our H atom here and then a bromine here. And then there's an H right there. So I'm just drawing those H's out to remind you of um, what the formal charge would be at those carbons. Right. Um, the other thing that we get down here below, and I'll just extend this down here, we also get Fe Br3, and this still has a negative charge on it. It's Fe Br4, but we'll leave it out written like this because that kind of shows that it came from that part of the molecule, right? All right, so again, here, just to highlight, here is your sigma complex. So we're going to be drawing a lot of resonance here. We're going to get really good at this. So resonance structure would have that coming over to here. So then putting in our H and our BR there. That would have our double bond here and here. Leaves us with a plus charge there. And then um, one more shift of electrons in this case where we come over to this position. So then double bond here, here, plus charge up at the top, H atom, bromine atom right there, right, connected to, to this carbon, essentially, okay? 
All right, so that's the end of our sigma complex structures here. So that's our step number one, if we're comparing it to our general mechanism up above. There's that preliminary step, but this is our first step of the EAS. And then our step two here is going to be your base. So remember we said that FeBr3 is a, a catalyst, so it can't be consumed. It has to be regenerated, right? So we're going to take bromine, come back here and put that in. So we have our um, iron connected to our bromine right, with our minus charge. And that iron's connected to three bromines. So Br3 Fe, it just kind of flipped it around the other way. All right, so what happens then is that we're going to take that bromine atom and we're going to swing around with its set of electrons and grab a hold of this H. And then those are going to come back down and that's where we're going to restore that aromaticity. Right, so here we get H, right, Br. You get your ring back with one, two, three bonds, and then your bromo group right there. So really that's the general mechanism that we're going to be seeing for the next five or six pages. The only thing that's going to differ is what this little electrophile thing is. But the general mechanism will look very similar to this. Now, let's take a look at the energy profile of this. So energy profile, um, again, two steps. So here's your reactants, bromine, iron tribromide, benzene here. All right, we're going to come up. That's your endothermic first step. So this is your step number one, right? That's your rate uh, determining step there. So we're going to see um, soon that the stability of this sigma complex um, is really important. So there's, sometimes there's substituents that we can put on the ring that make this more stable and therefore uh, more reactive if it lowers the um, rate limiting step transition state then it's a faster reaction right so here you end up with your sigma complex right and then we'll write here plus resonance there's two other resonance structures of that thing and then your fe there they combine those bromines to write br4 together so we have a carbocation there okay um now the second step here this is our step number two right here that's where we restore that aromaticity, right? And then the, you, you get your bromo group here with HBr and FeBr3. Um, overall reactions, exothermic by about 11 kcals per mole. Now, if we were to look at the next reaction, which is chlorination, well, it turns out to be pretty much identical with the exception of two things. The first is that we're going to use <coughs> chlorine here, right? We're chlorinating up. So, and the second is that the catalyst here is often Al aluminum trichloride. Uh, the other thing is that sometimes they'll pepper in a little FeCl3 um, in your textbook also. And other textbooks might use this too. All right, so mechanism of this. Well, let's take a look at it. So let's come in a little bit so I can fit it all in. So here, what's going to happen, we're not going to have bromine, we're going to have chlorine. So chlorine is going to do that same electron transfer, except with AlCl3. So what we're going to do is we're going to come around just like we did before, and we're going to do this. All right, so then that's going to form chlorine, chlorine, AlCl3. Plus and a minus. So looks pretty similar to what we've seen so far. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to react that with benzene. So let's put a benzene in here. And so this is like a, a one line step of this. So we'll take anyway, any, any set of electrons here. So come around and we'll grab that. And then we're going to do this. 
So that gives you here ALCL4 minus, just writing that out a little differently. And then the other thing that we get is we get benzene. with the loss of that double bond, so we get a sigma complex. So here's your H, here's your chlorine, there's your H down there. And again, you don't have to draw those H's in, but I like to put them in there because I think it helps students remember where the uh, substitution is occurring and also where the positive charge of the sigma complex is. All right, and then we get the other two resonance structures. So going through those a little bit quicker. Give you this, All right? An electron flow looks like that there. And the last one, we're coming down and doing this. So that's the third resonance structure in our sigma complex. Get the plus charge there. All right. So again, here is your sigma complex. Okay. Um, and then that's our, so remember that's our step one. So then the next step of this is that we're going to restore that aromaticity. So we're gonna come over here and we do that by using one of the chlorines of AlCl4. So I'm gonna write that out like this, All right? So again, what we're doing is we're taking these electrons and bringing them around here, grabbing a hold of this H and then those are coming down to this position right here. So in all, that gives us AlCl3 and HCl, plus your organic product. That's the one that we usually are most concerned with here. So you get your chlorine there. Now, the other reaction to talk about before we look at um, the next group of reactions other than halogenation is iodination. So I've kind of written this one out for you guys here to show you um, what this is gonna look like. So for iodination of benzene, it, it, it's a little bit different than the mechanisms that we saw before. So reaction-wise, you have to have benzene, iodine, and nitric acid. So when you're going through the chapter and you're looking for reaction conditions, what you often will see here is iodine and HNO3. So that's how you know you're gonna carry out this reaction. Uh, the, the mechanism for this is not something that is usually discussed in sophomore level organic chemistry. The end result though is that we have an iodine substituted here. You get some NO2, a little bit of water in there too. Other little side note here is the nitric acid is um, consumed in this reaction. It's a reagent, not a catalyst. So HNO3 is involved in um, creating our electrophile here. So it's a little bit different of a mechanism than we saw before. But the end result still is the same in the sense that you do a substitution reaction of um, the halogen on your benzene ring.